If you've ever wondered how a $14,000 travel trailer could end up leaving you with a balance of finance of over $31,000 and you want to learn how to avoid getting hosed like that, stay tuned. I think you might like today's video. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV uh, with a, a little bit of like a, a public service kind of message today. Basically, I, I want to kind of bring to light and borderline expose a few practices that I just greatly dislike uh, are, are very common and very widespread in the industry. Uh, make you aware of them because I think forewarned is forearmed as well as try to give you some ideas on how to uh, combat and or avoid some of those. We're going to talk about things like junk fees getting uh, piled on to a, uh, you know, a too good to be true kind of uh, RV sale price. Um, Aftermarket finance add-ons where like if you finance your RV and well over 80% of people finance RVs If you're going to finance an RV whether you're financing with Bish's RV or not This is a video that you're going to want to tune into because I want to point out some things that are out there and what sort of options you have as consumers and uh, not, not only that but like what sort of practices are literally illegal that frankly are practiced every day in this business and I want to begin by pointing out that today's video is not pointed at, directed to, or specific to like any one uh, organization or anything like that. The practices that I'm going to describe in this video today, ascribe, I can't even talk, describe in this video today are, uh, like I said, they're, they're employed by a lot of places out there. Not all of them. Not every single dealership operates uh, this way. And if you appreciate how we're kind of bringing this to light to make you a better and more educated shopper, please hit that subscribe button, like our video, and help spread that message. So to kick things off here, the concept of junk fees. Uh, that's basically the industry term for uh, when a, uh, a, a dealer or a dealer group advertises this just unbeatable, true, too good to be true price tag because it is too good to be true. We know that things that are seemingly too good to be true really tend to be. We all know that, right? But I think a lot of people want to believe that they did get that sweetheart deal. And there's a lot of people that don't know any different. They will go into a place and say, wait a minute, your price was $14,999, but now I have a, uh, a $2,200 delivery fee. I have a $1,200 prep fee. I have an additional $800 go ready package like what is included in this stuff um i have a 500 dollars title work fee like well I, I thought the rv was 14 9.99 and by the time you find out it's it's closer to 20 grand and that cheaper trailer ends up typically being a more expensive trailer uh it, the problem is um it, a lot of people are gonna watch this and go i can't believe somebody would fall for that well not everybody is a professional shopper you know and there's a lot of people who they will go to a place like this and the person across from this says, oh no, that's normal, every place does that. That's just what you have to pay. And at that point, they've already driven four hours to the store. They've got, you know, five people breathing down their neck, staring across from the table at them right there saying, yep, that's normal. You need to sign here today, please. And a lot of people cave in. I really, really greatly dislike that practice, but the hard, disgusting, sad fact is it works. It works really, really well. I'm really proud of the fact that Bish's RV doesn't engage in junk fees. Like when you see a price tag on our website, that already includes getting the RV there, getting it shipped there, getting it prepped and ready for you. Basically, all you have to do is add like taxes and state fees, things like that. But not every place uh, does that. So how can you smoke it out? How can you avoid it? How, how can you not, you know, get, get taken advantage of like that? Well, there is a way, but it's gonna take a little bit of doing. Uh, well, first of all, you have a choice. If you find out a, a place is engaging in this practice, you have a choice whether to take your business there or not. But if you want to really be able to truly shop and compare multiple dealerships, because again, put put us to the test. I don't care. This is true whether you buy from me at Bish's or, well, I, I'm not in sales, but whether you buy from Bish's or not, shop, not the sale price. People ask all the time, well, what's the price on that RV? shop the total cost of ownership and the question you want to ask so like after taxes after fees after license plates and all that stuff shop the true final out the door number because i mean logically do you care what the sticker says the price tag is or do you care what's actually coming out of your pocket i know which one matters more to me and it's the one that i'm actually finally paying but there is a way to kind of beat and defeat all of this 
even if you are financing your RV, which over 80% of people are, even if you are financing your RV, ask the question, if I walked in today with one check left in my personal checkbook and I was going to write one number in that thing one time to take the RV home and have everything be done, what would that number have to be? That is your true total cost of ownership. That is the way that you can smoke out, bypass, and defeat any of those sort of hidden fee things. Now the thing is, a lot of the places that engage in those practices, they're gonna say, well, I don't know, uh, you can find out after you buy it. That's literally a thing I've heard come out of people's mouths. That's a thing I've heard customers share with me that they were told when they went to a place, they wouldn't be told the actual true total price until after they already signed their paycheck away and were committed on a purchase contract. That's sketchy to me. And again, you always have a choice. You can continue to go down that path. You can decide to maybe work with some place that uh, is a little more clear and transparent and it doesn't even have to be Bicious RV. Again, plenty of places don't do hidden fees. You don't have to buy at a place that does that if you don't enjoy the experience. But <clears throat> if they won't tell you how much it is, that's probably a really good indication that they're not done tacking things on to you. Now, I used to sit there and wonder why would you want to work at a place that that operates like that? And as I've spent more years in this industry, I've worked with more people who have worked at multiple different dealerships, some of which were fee practicing locations. And the answer really kind of surprised me. They said, Josh, we really didn't know. Like we kind of heard stories, but we were always told it's no guys, it's not like that. It's just these other places trying to, to, to cause trouble for us. But at, at places that practice like that, oftentimes, the salesperson with whom you speak only has access to the actual too good to be true sale price before all the fees and fluff and junk and add-ons. Um, after that, it goes to some level of, you know, finance manager, sales manager, something like that, where then they calculate the final totals. Um, but you don't always even get to see that. And a lot of times the average salesperson at those stores is really not even well aware of that. Everything is so compartmentalized where you focus only on this and don't look outside of your box that the people working there aren't even fully aware that that is always the case. And again, it's just through years of experience talking to different people that have been at different places that I've been able to piece together a little more of the whole story here. Um, the other thing that uh, I, I really, really, want people to understand is the uh basically the, the the fact that you should you 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 should never be forced into adding something to a financing contract that you don't want and here's what i mean so when you finance an rv through a dealership uh basically they are um acting as an agent on your behalf and they're finding a lender for you you're not usually actually financing with the dealership themselves um when that happens you have some options uh, because you've done, or pardon me, because the dealership has done some of the, the clerical legwork for uh, the bank, the bank allows the dealer, if they want to um, add some money onto the, uh, the, the, the finance contract with customer consent for specific uh, products or services, they can. Now, common things would be um, like an extended service contract. Some people call it an extended warranty. When it's included in the upfront purchase price, that's called an extended warranty. When you pay for it after the fact, that's called a service contract. Now, the end result is the same, so I'm not gonna belabor that point too much, but just so that you know exactly what you're getting, um, you know, that's the thing. Now, there are also things like um, tire protection packages, paint protection packages, and all sorts of additional things that once you've already agreed on the purchase price of your trailer, it's already been sent to the bank, after the bank has already said, yes, okay, we'll lend them the money, the bank will say, we will allow you, you know, this much, sorry, I, I'm wearing black gloves, this much more money um, if the customer wants to add some extra stuff on some other services that your dealership uh, uh, offers. Um, the thing is, those cannot be forced onto a customer, and they are every day all the time that stuff happens in this industry. That is how after the junk fees and the finance add-ons, that's how a 14999 travel trailer will leave you with a balance of finance of $31,432.37. I don't know, whatever the number is, you get the idea where you can end up with a, a balance unbelievably greater than what you thought you were buying, you know? 
So here's the thing though. Truth in lending laws state that uh, to even suggest, even breathe to a customer that the bank wouldn't approve the loan unless you added these things on is flat illegal. If someone tells you something like that, they are bald face lying to you. And my recommendation is to get away. Now I've talked to uh, plenty of people who say, well, yeah, I, I just, you gotta watch those guys real close. Do you, you this trailer, this, this North Point, 300 plus dealers in the nation sell that North Point. Somebody else has that RV. Somebody else has it at a good fair price tag. Maybe they're not as close to home to you. I get that there are different factors to consider, but if they're willing to lie to you once to your face, they're willing to lie to you again over and over. Now I want to be fair here. There are some times when um, a, uh, somebody wants a longer uh, bank loan term than the amount that they're borrowing would normally allow for. If, if you weren't aware, somebody this morning was asking, how long are RVs financed for? Well, it varies. It varies a little bit based on things like your personal credit history, that's always a factor, but also it varies largely and probably mostly based on the um, total amount of money that you're looking to borrow from a lender. Um, common breakpoints are things like 10, 12, and 15 years based on things like, uh, every lender has different breakpoints, but common breakpoints uh, would be say like 10,000 to finance, 15,000 to finance, 20,000 to finance to get you those 10, 12, 15 year notes respectively. Now, a lot of people just heard me say, they go, there's no way I would pay, uh, I would finance something like this for 12 years. Uh, that's, that's, you know, you don't have to do that. That's another thing that I see people get, uh, sorry, I got to reel myself in. I get passionate about this because I've dealt against it for 14 years now of my life at the time this rolls out. But you never have to take a really long term on an RV loan. If um, you can actually get often better interest rates at five years and, and less. That's why a lot of times you say, man, I got like two point something interest rate or whatever, a better interest rate with my local credit union. Yes. Typically, they will only go to about a five-year term, whereas a lot of people like to finance an RV for 10, 12, 15 years um, to, uh, to keep the payment more in line. Now, that's a very specific thing. Let's say your balance to finance was like um, $24,000 and change. That could only net you typically a maximum of a 12-year term. But let's say that you had like a, a $250 a month payment. Well, that will put you over, you know? Interestingly, if you add something like, a, a, let's say, a, a, a tire and wheel package protection or something like that, uh, or, or something like that, to uh, like or an extended warranty to your uh, RV loan, to get it over a balance of $25,000 of finance, you can qualify then potentially for a 15-year loan, and you may actually drop your monthly payment. You are still paying more money. I'm not saying this is free magic money. I'm not trying to smoke screen anybody. What I'm saying is there are some really weird breakpoint cusp instances in which sometimes um, if if your goal is to seek a specific payment, very, very rarely, the way to do that is to spend just slightly more. But if you're really being smart about your RV loan, you're putting money down in the first place, um, you may actually want to restructure that loan so you're just putting a little bit less money down, financing slightly more, and then just pay whatever extra money you were going to put down right on the thing, get it paid for, and get it done. Little pro tip there for you from your Uncle Josh. You know, it's it's never cheaper spending more money, but if you have a very specific instance and goal you want to accommodate, there sometimes are ways to, to do that. And here's one more thing that people very rarely, like nobody ever wants to tell you this as a consumer. And that is the fact that like, if you do finance an RV and you financed an extended service contract or extended warranty, again, as a lot of people in places like to call it, if you do that and you add that to your RV's loan, if you trade that camper in, or if you don't use that extended service contract uh, after a period of time, typically you can get at least some of your money back out of that. Um, often, uh, you really can't actually get all of your money back out of it, but you need to have your ducks in a row because you can expect resistance on that. People want money coming in, they don't want money going back out. So what you need to do there is all of those pieces of paper that you get when you sign for your RV, 
keep them safe, know where they are. It boggles my mind how many people go to trade in an RV and don't have the title or don't know where it is. Keep your, your paperwork in order. Be aware of that kind of stuff. If you're not sure when you sit down before you sign the paperwork, ask these questions. You know, find the kind of answer that you're, you're going to get and you know, decide what you're gonna, gonna wanna do from there. Now, uh, one last little thought here. If you're sitting there and like you're starting to not like how this feels, looks, smells, anything. If the person across the table from you goes, well, you know, you were working with Dave out there in sales, I'd really hate to hear what's gonna happen to him if you don't go forward with this sale. That is some con man 101 guilt tactic BS that I recommend you get away from. Because first of all, what business, that has no bearing with what you're doing as a customer. Secondly, if that's how they treat their employees, how are they gonna treat their customers? You know, truly, any good business's greatest asset is their employees. And if they're not taking care of them, they're not really interested in taking care of you. I'm gonna get off my soapbox. Uh, again, sorry I'm like shouting like some dude, uh, you know, recording a TikTok video from the front seat of his F-150 on his lunch break over here. But this stuff gets me fired up. It drives me nuts and I see it and I hear it every single day. 365 days a year times 14 years. I've heard this story a lot. It's syndicated, I'm on reruns at this point. But this might all be new to you. So if you found value in today's video, if you're a returning member of the Nerd Herd, make sure you click the like button on the video. If you this is the first time you've tuned in, the first thing that you've, you've heard, if you appreciate how we are willing to pull back the curtain and, and put ourselves to the test here and, and you know educate you as a customer before you spend lots and lots of hard earned money, hit that subscribe button and know that we will shoot you straight. And when you're ready, we're ready. And in the meantime, keep the questions coming and I'll keep the videos rolling. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and best wishes from Bishes, everyone.